and welcome to Monkey Broadcast, our monthly review discussion show with me, the Jelly Monkey. And me, Sven the Crusader. And here we are in July. Summer is underway, and both me and Sven grow a little older since, you know, it's the month we were born and everything. Sigh, I feel old now. Yeah, same here. Anyway, moving on to the first section. q &A. As the title implies, this is where we answer a question sent to us by our fans and subscribers. If you would like us to answer your questions, please send them to us by YouTube PMs or leave them as a comment in this video. Our first question comes from Roy Havenstone 2 and he asks, Based on the news that I've been hearing, Square Enix is now dealing with record profit losses, so they're thinking about rebooting some of their old video game franchises, Chrono Trigger, Secrets of Mana, Arc Razor, etc. to counteract this. My question is, what old video game franchises from Square or Enix would you like to see rebooted? Okay, this is going to be an interesting one to answer because I'm going to have an answer for it that I don't think anyone will see coming. Oh, I see. I guess I better go first. I can't really think of that much off the top of my head. I guess a new Chrono Trigger might be nice, although I heard some people are incredibly divided on Chrono Cross, but I've yet to check that one out. Actually, having said that, one franchise from Square Enix I would like to see a continuation of is The World Ends Review, because frankly, that was awesome. Oh, yeah. I haven't played that, but I've had about 50 people recommend it to yeah. me. Yeah. Which almost never happens. Yeah, I will be honest, there are one or two hiccups in terms of the story, but on the whole, it's generally a really good game, and if you're an RPG fan, I definitely recommend it. So, yeah, that's pretty much my answer. Either a continuation of Chrono Trigger, or The World Ends of You. Either that, or I would like them to stop giving around the prequels and just make Kingdom Hearts free. For goodness sake, there are more, and no one cares about the little plot details, alright? <laughs> Yeah, especially not the Kingdom Hearts fans that have been around waiting for three since 2005. <laughs> oh dear. So, yes, yeah, Sven, what would you like to see rebooted? Well, it's not so much a reboot as it is, and prepare for a shock. I never thought I'd say this either. I, the Final Fantasy critic, am endorsing a remake. More specifically, Final Fantasy IX. Ah, right. <laughs> I should probably explain to some people who don't know, Final Fantasy IX is possibly the only 3D Final Fantasy game that Spending Crusader likes. <laughs> yeah, I used to like 7 and 8, and then I realized I was stupid. Nah. Well, to be fair, I think 7 does have a lot of positive points to it. To me, it's just so overrated, it's not worth it, but yeah. <laughs> That's my view on it. If they make a Final Fantasy IX remake, I'll be happy, because frankly, I want to see it in rebooted graphics. Why I think it would look great in Cell Shaded, I don't know. And I would really like a voice cast. Thank you very much, Square. Yeah, I can, yeah, I can understand that. Admittedly, I haven't played Final Fantasy IX. I've only seen a walkthrough to Sacred Story. But to, to be honest, I can say the same about Set Evan as well. I've only ever seen walkthroughs of those two games. So I know the story, but not played the actual game. But yeah, there was a lot I did like about Final Fantasy IX. I will say that much. So it would be nice to see a remake, or maybe a continuation, although... Hey, I'm just having horrible flashbacks of Final Fantasy X-2, so... Yeah, and probably Final Fantasy XIII, too. Thanks, Square! <laughs> well, hey, it's not all bad. I mean, Square's now releasing a rhythm game based on Final Fantasy. Isn't so that something to look forward to? No. Okay, then. And on that note, we better go to the next question. Moving on, our next question comes from Al Flame, and he asks... Do you think that robots could work well in a horror game? I would have to say yes, but that's mostly because I'm of the mind that any concept can make a good story. It just depends how the writer approaches it. Just to take a small example, I forget the name of the studio, but there was one time a bunch of executives came up to the producers of Batman the Animated Series and went, Hey, we want you to make a series about Batman in high school. That's concept alone could have been absolutely disastrous and when you read it on paper you think what that's a stupid idea but because there was a series of good writers who actually thought about how the concept could work they ended up making the futuristic version of batman otherwise known as batman beyond which is one of my personal favorites and it's one of the better dc animated series so yeah i definitely say robots can work in a horror setting it all depends on how the writer approaches it 
Well, you kind of covered all the points that I wanted to, except I'll just add on from that. I think it could work because, well, robots can be effing terrifying. Just look <laughs> at Terminator 2. Because frankly, I'm all for the human villains who just terrify people with how inhuman they seem, but whenever something seems literally unstoppable in a horror setting, it just adds that level of, oh god, we're gonna die. Mm. I do agree there. I mean, I know technically they're cyborgs, but I guess you can sort of throw the Borg and the Daleks in terms of robots that are absolutely terrified. And I know they're technically not horror, but they do give up that feeling of, oh crap, we're gonna die every single time you face them, so... Yeah, they are pretty damn terrifying. I would add the Cybermen, but they cannot take their faces seriously. <laughs> that is true. And plus, some Star Trek fans will claim that the Borg got less and less terrified as they went on, but that's an entirely separate issue, but I don't know much about. Anyway, actually, again, I know this is technically not a robot, but the very fact that some people find GLaDOS absolutely terrifying is proof that they can work in a horror setting. Oh, dear God, yes. That's an extremely good point, because... Frankly, the idea of a robot that pretends it's on your side, I'll use it even though it's a female personality, <laughs> the very idea of a robot that pretends it's on your side then backstabs you with the idea of cake is kind of terrifying in a silly way, a really silly way. Now that yeah. I, not that I say it, it sounds less terrifying. <laughs> yeah, it's like kind of weird dark comedy for, well, I guess you could say Portal is black comedy. Yeah, that's pretty much its whole shtick. Alrighty, so yeah, in summary, robots are absolutely f***ing terrifying. So, we'll move on to the final question. This one comes from DKC Junglefied, and he asks, Do you think there should be a Fire Emblem game on the 3DS or the Wii U? Sven? Uh, well, I can see it coming, but I'm not sure if I would buy either of those gimmicky-ass systems for a Fire Emblem game, I'll be honest. Ah. Uh. Well, I'd still say they're pretty good gameplay engines on their own. I mean, to be honest, I think the only thing that's wrong with the 3DS currently is it hasn't actually got that much software at the moment, because literally the only thing that's coming out at the moment are remakes of old games, which, don't get me wrong, that's nice and all, but I do want to actually have some new titles. <laughs> yeah, and now that you mention it, actually, I want to throw it in. Maybe if they release an actual quality game like a Fire Emblem game, it might make the system a bit more worth it, because as it is, the 3D's a bit... bleh. Mm. I think the 3D is annoying, you can turn it off, but yeah, I think having some, a more new game, game systems might help it a bit, and it may even it help the Wii U, although to be fair, this is one thing I've heard about the Wii U, which does actually make a lot of sense. According to Nintendo, they weren't planning to talk about the Wii U at this particular E3, but they had to do it because information was leaking about it so fast that they had to release it, hence why there's so few games announced for it. Oh, so basically they sprung a leak that was so out of control they had to blow up the whole ship. Pretty much, yes. <laughs> to use a creative analogy... But i definitely like to see a Fire Emblem game on the 3DS or the Wii. In fact, I'd just like to see a Fire Emblem game at all at this point, because there literally hasn't been one since Radiant Dawn. And, well, there has been one, it's just refusing to come outside of Japan at the moment. Well, there was Shadow Dragon, but... Oh, yeah. Yeah, this, I, I, the... I like to forget that. <laughs> but right now the sequel's a bit, um, slow. Yeah. Really slow. Thank yes. you, Intelligent Systems and Nintendo. <laughs> and frankly, Nintendo needs some RPG titles after it essentially pissed off its entire American audience. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, just to play fair, I am going to say... With either of those systems, I would really like to see a Fire Emblem game in better graphics. That is true. Like I said, it would be nice just to see a Fire Emblem game at all at this point. And again, to re-elaborate my point, it would be nice for Nintendo to have some good RPGs. Although, to go slightly off topic, whilst I do sympathize with all Nintendo fans in America, and I have to say the statement by Nintendo of America regarding the export of Xenoblade, Pandora's Tower and Last Story, was really patronizing and cheap, and it doesn't make any sense. I do have to kind of stifle and chuckle, because Xenoblade is actually coming to Europe, so for once, I am in a position where I can play a game that's not coming out to America for a long time, and possibly never will. 
Oh, well, luckily I never cared about Xenoblade. Yeah, now you know how I feel, people. Now you know how I feel. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a cold, cruel existence with not much sympathy from game companies. Yeah. Although I doubt Namco will ever change their minds. Sadly, no, sob. Anyway. <laughs> Tales of Zidia looks so great, but I wonder if you'll ever get across the damn shores anyway. <laughs> okay, that's the end of the Q&A, so as we push away that empty world of bitterness and hatred, we now move on to our next section. Video Games! This section is where we review the video games we've been playing for the past month, but I don't have any games I want to go in depth for that I'll be saving those for the quickfire review section, so... I'll just turn it over to Sven. Do you have any games you want to talk about this month, or...? Yes, one, even though it'll be a quick one, because this game is by no definition complex. Team Fortress 2. Ah, uh, <laughs> I have heard a lot about that game. <laughs> yeah, and now, having played it, I can't really find a way to disagree with all the praise. It may not be very complex, but damned if it is not fun. Yeah, I've heard a lot of good things about it, but I haven't heard much about it though, so would you mind elaborating what type of game it is? Well, straight up FPS game with nine characters. And they each do have their separate characters too. And one liners. Oh that nice. Make for some that makes them for some amusing in battle interjections. <laughs> is it mostly a single player game or is it a multiplayer? Entirely multiplayer game. Ah, like, right. There is nothing but multiplayer, so for all the <laughs> For all the multiplayer people out there, yeah, you'll love it. <laughs> and I also have to add, if you're coming into this game looking for anything remotely serious or Call of Duty-like, turn away. <laughs> it has the most cartoony style I've ever seen in my life. And it deals heavily in, well, pretty much all sorts of humor. Dark, <laughs> regular, straight up out there insanity. So it's basically more comedic is what you're trying to... Yes, very much so, but then again, it's coming from the people who made Portal. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. Oh, quick disclaimer for anyone wanting to get into it lately. Team Fortress 2 is now free to play. So, you can download Steam and download Team Fortress 2 absolutely for free, get the full game. Seems great, right? Then you look at the f***ing fan base. Oh. This has to be... Quite possibly the most elitist bunch of shit heads I've ever seen in my life. I mean, literally, there are people who are using a special program to insta-ban anyone who hasn't purchased the game properly. You're kidding, right? No, I could not make this shit up if I tried. Oh, good lord. I, I thought Brawl elitists were bad, but that's just bloody ridiculous. Yeah, Valve fans... I'm sorry if there are any of you out there, but about 80% of you are elitist fuck. Maybe I should be glad that it cut out then. <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave that in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so aside from the elitist effers, you would recommend the game overall then? Yeah, now that the elitist bastards have kind of calmed down a bit. It's been free for about a month now. I would recommend this to pretty much anyone who wants to play it. Anyone who's into FPS games and, well, doesn't mind the fact that this game is not serious in the slightest. I mean, <laughs> let me just put this in perspective. Three of the weapons you can use are a jar of piss, a <laughs> bottle, and a shovel. A, oh yeah, a what and a shovel? A whiskey bottle. Okay. <laughs> but if you land a critical hit on someone's head, it shatters. <laughs> oh, dear lord. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just hearing those weapons, it does sound kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, if nothing else, look up gameplay footage, because this game can be just hilarious. <laughs> I may just do that after we're done here. So, yeah, overall, you definitely recommend this, but... <laughs> Yeah, just be slightly careful on the servers, well, private ones, because I'm not sure how many of those elitists are still lurking about. Ah, uh, okay then, fair enough.